Between 1933 and 1945, the Nazi government of Germany sanctioned the murder of 6 million Jews in Europe during a genocide known as the Holocaust. However, Jews did not peacefully succumb to their annihilation. All over Europe, Jews fought back. The largest uprising occurred in the Jewish ghetto of Warsaw, Poland, when a small, desperate group of Jews fought back against a heavily armed Nazi force. Though they knew that they would ultimately fail, the Jewish resistors fought to the death against the Nazi oppressors. The resistance in the Warsaw Ghetto embodied a triumph of the human spirit against insurmountable odds. At the conclusion of World War I, Germany was left dissatisfied. The Treaty of Versailles had forced Germany to give up weapons, land, and money. In the 1930s, economic woes caused by the Great Depression swept across a recovering European continent, giving rise to political movements such as communism and fascism. Hitler comes to power on a wave of fascism that spreads across Europe. It was motivated primarily by economic hardship, social upheaval, and religious intolerance for Jews in particular, but anybody who is different in general. Between 1933 and 1939, the Nazi government worked to rid itself of its Jewish population through legal, social, and economic means. World War II began on September 1, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. The Nazis began to construct ghettos upon capturing the country. The ghettos were walled off portions of cities built to confine the Jews and other victims of the Holocaust. On the 22nd of July, 1942, Nazi officials began deporting 6,000 Jews per day from the ghetto in Warsaw, Poland to die in extermination camps. These actions were initiated by the Nazi intent to systematically exterminate all Jews in Europe. A Warsaw ghetto survivor who wished to remain anonymous witnessed these deportations called actions firsthand. The actions were you know, every day, 10,000 people on the train, there was no way people say, how come you didn't escape? You couldn't. You, you couldn't. This, you, you were surrounded, surrounded by soldiers. Not even children were spared from the mass deportations and executions. In his diary, the leader of the ghetto's Jewish council, Adam Chernikow, wrote, we were told that all Jews, irrespective of sex and age, will be deported east. The most tragic dilemma is the problem of the children in orphanages. Perhaps something can be done. Chernikow's pleas to save the children went unanswered, and he committed suicide soon after. In Chernikow's suicide note, he wrote, I am powerless. My heart trembles in sorrow and compassion. I can no longer bear all this. They are demanding that I kill the children of my people with my own hands. There is nothing for me to do but that. By September 1942, just one-fifth of the ghetto's original population remained. On January 18, 1943, a Jewish force attacked Germans during a round of deportations. Armed with only homemade explosives and few real weapons, they were able to drive off their Nazi oppressors. It was a small victory but it gave Jews inside the ghetto a glimmer of hope. The Warsaw Jews began to prepare for battle. The Jews had few weapons, some pistols, rifles, and one machine gun, as well as Molotov cocktails, homemade gasoline bombs. The Polish resistance was led by 23-year-old Mordecai Anielowicz. Anielowicz instructed inhabitants of the Warsaw Ghetto to dig secret shelters under the buildings of the ghetto. These shelters, called bunkers, contained the necessities for their inhabitants to survive months underground. In April 1943, after learning of Nazi plans to deport the ghetto's remaining members, the ghetto's largest resistance group, the Jewish Fighting Organization, sent out a call to resistance to all the Jews in the ghetto. It stated, We all remember well the days of terror during which 300,000 of our brothers and sisters were cruelly put to death in the death camps. Six months have passed of life in constant fear of death, not knowing what the next day may bring. We are slaves, and when slaves are no longer profitable, they are killed. Jews in your masses, the hour is near. You must be prepared to resist, not to give yourselves up like sheep to slaughter. 
let everyone be ready to die like a man. On April 19, 1943, Nazi forces began the final round of Jewish deportations. The Jewish fighting organization, aware of the German advance, sent out alerts to all Jews in the ghetto, telling them to take shelter in the underground bunkers. At approximately 4 a.m., German fighters accompanied by a tank entered the ghetto, and the Jewish resistance began their attack. Using primarily Molotov cocktails, the resistance was able to set the tank ablaze and kill a number of Nazi troops. After subsequent German assaults were also repelled by the Jewish resistance, the Nazis set fire to the buildings from which the Jews were attacking. This forced the resistance to fight its way back to the center of the ghetto. The commanding officer of the Nazi forces in the ghetto, Jürgen Stroop, noted in his battle report that the Jews resisted in every conceivable way. The whole ghetto had been systematically provided with cellars, bunkers, and passageways. The Jews were determined to fight back, by every means and with the weapons in their possession. The entire ghetto was engulfed in flames. The deputy commander of the Jewish fighting organization later recounted the horrors of the days that followed. The omnipotent flames were now able to accomplish what the Germans could not do. Thousands of people perished. The stench of burning bodies was everywhere. The flames chased the people out from their shelters, made them leave the previously prepared safe hideouts in attics and cellars. Thousands staggered about in the courtyards, where they were easy prey for the Germans who imprisoned them or killed them outright. Still, the resistance fought on. Jews were given an opportunity to voluntarily leave the ghetto and be taken into Nazi custody. None chose to surrender. Amid the blazing inferno, the Jewish fighting organization wrote a declaration. It was distributed to the remaining Jews in the ghetto. The leaflet proclaimed, Poles, citizens, and freedom soldiers, amid the din of artillery, amid the rattle of the machine guns, amid the smoke of fires and the dust of the murdered Warsaw ghetto, we know that though we may all perish in battle, we will not surrender. We are gasping for the revenge and punishment of our common enemy. Long live freedom! Death to the tortures and tormentors. Long live the battle to death against the Germans. On May 8th, 19 days after the uprising began, Nazi forces located the Jewish fighting organization headquarters at 18 Mila Street. Mila 18 was a stronghold to which most of the remaining Jewish resistance fighters had retreated. After hours of unsuccessfully attempting to invade the bunker, the Germans reverted to gas bombs killing many of the Jews inside. Most of those who remained, including the Jewish fighting organization leader Mordecai Nielovich, committed suicide during the chaotic blindness caused by the gas grenades. Astonishingly, a small group of Jews escaped death at Mila 18 and regrouped with the remaining Jewish resistance in the ghetto. The Jews were able to escape through the sewer systems to the free part of Warsaw. Not all survived the harrowing trek through the sewers due to lack of water, food, and medical care. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising ended on May 16, 1943. When the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising ended, 56,000 Jews of the initial 60,000 in the ghetto had died. More than 7,000 of those died fighting. The remaining Jews were burnt alive in bunkers or captured, then killed in extermination camps. Nazi casualties are uncertain, but some estimate well over a thousand enemy troops were killed by the Jewish resistance. The Jews inside the ghetto knew that in all probability, their actions during the uprising would be their last. No Jew went into the fighting expecting to survive. Because they knew they had nothing left to lose, Jews inside the ghetto were somehow able to maintain high morale even as they struggled to survive in the living nightmare of the Holocaust. The Jews of Warsaw were resigned to death, but they were determined to die on their own terms. The Jewish resistance in the ghetto held out longer against the Nazis than the entire country of Poland had at the start of World War II. The events in the Warsaw Ghetto reached the pinnacle of human pain, suffering, and tragedy. Though the resistance ended in vain, as they knew it would, the triumph of human spirit by the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto made the martyrs, who symbolize to this day, the very essence of hope, resolve, and sacrifice.